Hi there, I'm Josh Finn from J&H Aerospace, and this is the build video for the 2025 Twister Easy from J&H Aerospace. This is the simplest and easiest helicopter available for Science Olympiad Helicopters competition, and in general, probably one of the easiest to build helicopters on the market, period, that's for rubber power. This aircraft uses 3D printed hubs, top and bottom, and plastic propeller bearing, all sheet balsa flying surfaces. So it builds in about 15 minutes. So with that description given, let's get started with the build. You will need the following tools and materials to build out your twister. You'll need a pair of needle nose pliers. These need to be in good condition with um, texturing that allows you to grip the propeller shaft. A good quality bottle of super glue. This is Bob Smith Medium CA. We do not recommend Thin CA, but Medium CA works well. You can get Bob Smith uh, Mercury Adhesives Satellite City or uh, Gorilla CA if you can get it in bottles like this. You want a bottle of CA Accelerator. Uh, Zap, um, which also sells a good quality CA, sells this. Uh, this is Bob Smith brand. You can also get Mercury or Satellite City. Locking forceps are very useful for tying your rubber motors. You can see how they lock in place. A pair of scissors, again, for trimming your rubber motors. This rubber lubricant is the type that we sell. It's a silicon oil, uh, but you can also use uh, super lube silicon oil or um, radio control car uh, shock fluid that's silicon based or something of that nature, Armorall uh, or Son of a Gun also work well. Lastly, you will need a winder. It's not fun to hand wind helicopters. Get a winder so that you can actually do this. We will begin by installing our rotor assemblies into this helicopter. So the first step is to remove this red plastic propeller so that we can add our propeller hubs to it. So what you want to do is grasp this elbow on that propeller shaft end right there, and you want to squeeze, and I didn't squeeze hard enough. You want to squeeze very, very hard on this piece of wire so that you can bend and straighten it. It should hurt when you're squeezing it. Once you have straightened that piece of wire, the propeller will slide off. You can retain this for other projects and for fun, but you're not going to use it as any other part of this helicopter. The bottom rotor hub has this stub in it. The stub faces out from our propeller shaft assembly, just like that. Now, grasp this propeller shaft slightly in from where you made that bend, so a little further in. If this piece were to break off where you bent it, that's fine. You can go a little further in. We're going to grasp this, slide everything forward, and again, we're going to put a death grip on this pair of pliers, and we're going to use our thumb to press very hard against that to get an, a firm 90 degree bend, just like this. We don't want any curvature in the propeller shaft, we just want a sharp bend right there. Take CA glue with this piece held like so. And squirt glue up and down this shaft like that. And now slide this all the way down like that. We're going to kind of let this free hang below and try to get it all perpendicular, just like that. So we want this shaft perpendicular in both dimensions. Let me see, I've got to scooch it over just a little bit there. And now, we can take CV Accelerator. We can squirt a little on there. Now notice I have kept this bearing well below that area so I don't risk getting any glue into my bearing. Just 
Let's go ahead and pop a motor stick loose from the sheet. And so we can go ahead and test fit our, nose, our bearing down here at the bottom. We can see that it's very loose, so we'll just slide it back off for now. The next thing to do is to install our top rotor hub. So we're going to install the top rotor hub with these bevels facing downwards. So if I drop it in here, you can see the orientation I have it positioned. So the beveled faces are on the bottom, the flat face is on the top. So we're going to take this back out. All right, we're going to put glue in this little slot. And then we can drop this guy back down in there. Get it in as square as you possibly can in this dimension and in this dimension. Next, remove the rear hook assembly here. And it is going to glue on so that it's covering that little triangle. And so the hook is facing towards that upper hub. like that. Remove two of your blades from the blade sheet and we're going to start by gluing these onto the bottom hub assembly. Leave this in place on that bevel. You can see how we have this oriented. I'm gluing it to the beveled face on the bottom. We'll come over to the other side. We'll do the same thing. We don't want the blades off like this. We want them parallel. Just like that. So now we have a nice pitch angle between them. To keep the blades from breaking easily, Remove two of these little triangles. Run a bead of glue across and glue them on like that. You can do the same procedure for the top rotor. You're again going to glue these on that bottom beveled face. These two have to be reinforced. I've got a blade that's not wanting to stay put, so we'll hit it with some accelerator. Now you can see I have re reinforced the bottoms of both blades. Next, from your motor stick fuselage parts sheet, remove one of these top caps and pop a little square out of it. And we're going to put glue on this small end so that it slides right through. Just like that. Flush with the end. These are the vane assemblies that go at the top. Your helicopter probably will not be able to fly without these. And all you have to do with these is run a bead of glue down and onto the top cap. And they will attach just like that. But you need this glue right here, um, otherwise they will tend to fly off.
can also mount these kind of sideways on the um, on the fuselage, or that you would have them mount um, like so. But you you have to do all of them that way if, if you want to go that route. Otherwise, they don't line up correctly. And that is a stronger way of assembling it. So now we have that vein like so. And that will help stabilize the helicopter in flight. This bottom bearing, as we have mentioned, tends to fit very loosely, so you can mitigate that behavior by breaking a piece of scrap material out of your blade sheet. You can stick it sideways in here. And use it as a shim so the motor stick fits on uh, fits tightly in there. This propeller shaft has to be on the same side as that hook. Typical starting length for a rubber motor for the twister is about 10 inches. So for, to make a 10 inch loop we need a 20 inch strand. So we measure 10 inches. Sorry my rubber is tangled a little bit here. And then we'll measure 10 inches again. And we'll cut that at that length. Before we tie this rubber to prevent it from cutting itself, we want to squirt a small amount of this lubricant on here. I one knot, and I'll do this slowly, form a loop, and pull the rubber through that loop. I'll tie this off. Then we can do the same thing a second time. Now, pulling this all tight, a tiny dab of glue on the very first knot that we tied. Just like that. Now, we will fully lubricate the rubber motor now, escorting a little bit more lubricant on. And we want the rubber to be slimy to the touch so that it's easy to handle. like that. We have videos demonstrating the proper way to wind and load rubber motors for these aircraft. However, some students don't possess all of the equipment needed to do that, so we're going to show you how to do this with a paper clip, a binder clip, and a regular winder. Clip your binder clip in place on a chair. Take your paper clip and bend one end out. Now we're going to lock the other part of the paper clip through, just like that. Load your rubber motor onto this hook. Get the knot pretty far back. And now, load the paper clip through between the propeller shaft and the motor stick. For fully winding this rubber motor, you want to stretch out four times the relaxed length. In this case, that would be 40 inches, and wind in about 60% of your turns at that length. We're just going to give a partial winding. So I've gotten past a full row of knots into the second one. I'm working my way in. The rubber feels relatively tight. Now slide that on. So 
slide our paper clip out, and now the aircraft is wound and loaded. With your helicopter wound partially like this, don't expect particularly long flights, but we can get something decent. You can hold the helicopter by the motor stick and let go. Um, obviously, I have a hand holding the camera. And there we go. As you can see, these do tend to wander around a little bit, and that's okay. Because they stay pretty much in one spot there like that. Don't let them land in the kitchen sink. All right, as you can see, uh, the helicopter flies pretty nicely. I landed with more than a full row of knots left, which is suboptimal. So that means I should look at shortening this rubber motor slightly uh, so that I can land with a little less than one row of knots. This one probably came out, I don't know, maybe a little heavy, I don't know. Check by weighing these. They do sometimes come out underweight, sometimes overweight, it depends. So with that said, optimizing your rubber motor length comes down to if the, the plane's coming down with a whole lot of turns left, shorten the rubber motor. If it's landing with not enough turns left, meaning less than a, a half a row of knots, then you should go to a longer loop of rubber. We have classes uh, in the form of Indoor Flight University available, which show how to understand the flight of helicopters, how they remain stable, how they operate, and how to optimize them. Also, a very extensive description of how to test and to break in and to wind rubber motor to get maximum flight times. I hope you'll check that out on our website. Again, that's Indoor Flight University. Once you've mastered the Twister, you can move on to other helicopters like the Tornado and hopefully ultimately to the Hurricane or something of that nature. We hope that you've enjoyed this video and that you've learned something, and we'll see you around.